This video is going to be a short tutorial where I'm going to walk you guys through installing these billet half moons in a Subaru EJ style head. These billet half moons actually replace these plastic ones that were installed from the factory. And I did a video recently where I talked about these billet half moons and why I think they shouldn't just be used for aftermarket performance applications, but why I think they should also be used for reliable daily driver long term builds. This is my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. So let's dive into the installation. The first thing you need to do with these is you actually have to get the valve covers off of your Subaru. And if you have your engine in your engine bay, that's gonna be a little bit trickier. So let me show you guys what I'm doing because my engine is definitely still in my engine bay. Okay, we're here on the passenger side here in a left-hand drive car. And as you can see, I've removed all of my intake ducting and all my intake tract. That actually gives me good access to the valve covers here. And then you'll have plenty of access to get to all the bolts so you can remove that valve cover. So as you can see, I've already removed the valve cover. I've got that on the side. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove these little half moons that are over here on the back of the cams. That's where those half moons are installed from the factory. They're right here. So you remove this little half moon right here, which is the upper one for that intake cam. And there's actually another half moon down here on the exhaust cam. And incidentally, that exhaust cam half moon is definitely the one that leaks the most because that's where the most heat is and the most heat gets trapped in this engine. So that spot right there where all the oil pulls up is where that little plastic little half moon is going to get heated and shrunk over and over again until it finally shrinks and deforms to a point where it's no longer going to hold the oil seal. And eventually, even on a totally stock non-performance engine, it's really common to develop an oil leak right here even if it was installed correctly 100,000 miles ago. And I'm telling you guys, putting these billet half moons in instead of these plastic ones, regardless of whether or not it's a performance build, will actually make your engine more reliable and last longer without having an oil leak develop from the valve cover seals. And then just for the hell of it, I'm gonna show you guys what I did on the other side, on the driver's side. I just remove everything. I remove the little harness plug that's right here and the little brackets right here. I actually don't use a windshield washer reservoir, so I got that out of the way. And basically this makes it really easy to get to either of the valve covers, to change my spark plugs, or to do anything. Because I'll tell you guys, the more and more I work on engines and the older I get, the more I realize removing stuff to make it easy to get access is really the key to enjoying working on your car. Because snaking around in hard to reach areas and scratching your hands up and struggling to try to get a bolt out or trying to, get, trying to get that spark plug out just is a fucking nightmare. It's not worth it. So I'll tell you guys right now, take the time, remove all the extra stuff. It only takes a few minutes and it'll make it a joy. It'll make it a pleasure to work on your car. That's my advice to you guys in this video. Okay guys, we're back on the passenger side. Let me get a little bit of light on this situation for you guys. Boom. Okay guys, we're on the passenger side again, and I'm going to remove this little plastic half moon right here in the back of the head. So the trick is, you want to get in there with something like a little vice grip or something that's got a nice little grip on it to kind of pop this sucker out, because these things are actually put in with a little bit of RTV from the factory. So I got this little channel lock that's got a right angle on it, hopefully this will be the right size. I can just get down there on the plastic little body and see if I can kind of work this sucker out. Boom! Just like that. There's that little plastic half moon from the factory. This one had a little bit of RTV on it. And this sucker is gonna be replaced with that billet one. Okay guys, I just wanna show you how I had to clean up this RTV. Getting that little plastic little half moon out is only half the battle. Once you get that sucker out, you're gonna have to clean off all that RTV that kind of was left over in the little slot. Because this is a machine surface, you wanna get all that old RTV off of it. So I just wanna show you guys exactly how much I got off. There's a little bit of residue right there, but that's gonna be fine. And I also have the other one already installed right here. And basically when you install these billet half moons, you just want to slide your finger over the little gap right here and just make sure there's no ridge right there because a good billet half moon should slip right in and have virtually no notch whatsoever right there. So make sure at the top right there you have no notch. You can barely just feel it right there. But virtually it's completely smooth little transition from the cylinder head to that little billet little wedge. So just make sure it's completely installed and you have a nice smooth surface right there. Okay, when you put the RTV on this billet half moon, guys, put a really, really thin coat. I gotta tell you guys, it's one of the biggest mistakes I see from people, and it's one of the biggest mistakes I've made over most of my career, is I put on way too much RTV. So as you can see here, just put the thinnest, thinnest little coat you can put on this billet piece. Anytime you're gonna put two billet machine pieces together, you want the thinnest, thinnest little coat of RTV possible. I mean so thin, you can pretty much see through it.
Okay guys, I have that lower half moon installed. It's a totally smooth transition, so it's completely installed all the way. And that's basically how you want those to look. That's the lower half moon right there, for that exhaust cam. And then moving up to the intake cam, that's the little half moon behind the intake cam. So those half moons are completely installed. It's a nice smooth, flush fit with that top of that cylinder head surface. And now I can go ahead and install those valve cover gaskets. And I'll put a little bit of RTV on them, just like the factory specs. But this should be a lot more robust sealing for those valve cover gaskets over the long term. And that, guys, is how you install those billet half moon seals in Subaru EJ style heads with your engine inside your car. But I gotta say, guys, installing these half moon seals with the engine in the car is really a huge pain in the ass. The upper half moon seals are pretty easy to get in. You can actually tap those in with a rubber mallet, so that's not a problem. But those lower half moon seals are actually only a couple inches away from the front frame rails on these Subarus, and they're a pain in the ass to get all the way in. So I gotta warn you guys, I really wouldn't recommend doing this with your engine in the car. It's definitely a good idea to install these billet half moon seals when you have that engine outside the car on an engine stand, so you get them nicely seated and you have lots of room to work with. But if you have no option, as you guys just saw in this video, it is doable, it's possible, but it's definitely just a pain in the ass to get those lower ones in. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there for today. If you guys have any questions or any comments, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section. If you guys need parts or any fluids or any tools for your Subaru, make sure you check out my Subaru-only Amazon store. I'll include the link in the description below. And if you guys aren't familiar with the Amazon store and how it works with affiliate links, the way it actually works is it's the same cost to you guys. What it is, it actually takes away one to 3% of the profit from Amazon and from Jeff Bezos. And it's actually gonna give me that profit and I'm gonna use that profit to reinvest it into the Subaru Only channel and to make more videos and more content. So if you guys use that link to buy anything on Amazon, it's exactly the same cost to you. All you're doing is taking away about one to 3% of profit from Jeff Bezos. And then also, if you guys need any factory service manuals or any technician guides, I actually have all these available on my SubaruOnly.com website and I host it for free for all of you guys. So make sure you guys check out SubaruOnly.com if you guys need any factory service manuals because I have factory service manuals for every make and model of Subaru from the early 90s through 2020. Alright guys, thanks again for checking out the video, I really appreciate it. My name is Luke, you guys are watching the Subaru Only channel, and until next time guys, later!